The Nets certainly with some outstanding opportunities on that final possession to pull out a win here. But, Sarah, I think the reminder over this recent stretch of games is it is new. There are issues, and the Nets came out of the gates looking so great those first two games that it felt like, oh, wow, I mean, excellence is just taking place immediately. But there are some things that are going to take some time, and we're seeing that manifest, especially since Spencer Dinwiddie went down. Yeah, it's going to be a work in progress, and I think for all of those reasons, you have these opportunities to look at the film, look at the circumstances, look at the situation. I think everyone is different, but there have certainly been some common themes that we've talked about. I mean, just the extra opportunities for Washington tonight. Think about the fact that they had 23 additional field goal attempts. You know, the second chance points, the points off turnovers, and that really affects you and impacts you in all sorts of ways. It's not just the points that they're getting off of it, but the looks you're getting offensively, the flow you can get into. It, it affects you in a variety of ways. But I think for all of those reasons, there's still a lot of positive to pull out of these things. I think some of the snippets and some of the stretches offensively of the Nets, we saw a lot of fluidity. They come away with 25 assists. There was some good ball movement. But again, on the defensive end, it's those same type of issues and breakdowns. But to me, more of it was less about the initial possessions, that half-court defense. It came from transition. It came from those second-chance looks and some of the opportunities where they had caught themselves out of position that they've got to clean up. Yeah, no doubt about it. And, Sarah, one thing we've also seen is, you know, since Spencer Dinwiddie has gone down, you put even more of a microscope on those guards coming off the bench, and they have struggled. I mean, Landry Shamit has really struggled thus far. And then Karis LeVert, we see this sometimes with Karis, where he goes through a period of adjustment where – he, he does not look anything like the Karis LeVert we know. And then all of a sudden, at some point, it clicks in and he starts playing like an all-star again. You could tell he's still figuring out this role here because he is not yet anywhere near the Levert we know and love and saw in the bubble. And that's part of the expectation, and I think just the integration process when you're playing alongside these two superstars, Kevin Durant, what he does on the floor and how you make sure that you complement things he is doing. Same goes for Kyrie Irving. Um, and it's ebbs and flows, and we've seen it out of different players. Landry Shamit, of course, has that big game against Atlanta three games ago and then didn't get a lot of touches in the last game and, and struggled here tonight. Karis LeVert, I think, is someone, to your point, that we've seen go through these tough times and challenges, and then he finds his way back. So I think for him, it is just continuing to maintain a level of positivity. He saw some frustration and visible frustration. Um, it still impact the game in different ways with his facilitation, with his creation of his shots not falling, still making sure you're doing the other things in terms of rebounding and on the defensive end that this team needs to help get those wins. Well, the Nets are getting a lot of practice in close games over <laughs> this recent stretch. I mean, Sarah, we've seen the Nets have issues rebounding against Utah in the past, and, and you know, those were Nets teams that maybe even rebounded better than what we've seen thus far. How do they handle Tuesday against the Jazz? The Jazz, it, it, they're coming in loaded. And think about the fact that you've not only got to concern yourself with the rebounding aspect of it, but the pick and roll side of things with the Nets are, are still a work in progress in negotiating and handling pick and roll. So when you got Donovan Mitchell, when you got Mike Conley, when you got our, our friend Boyan Bogdanovich, sharpshooter from the outside in the multiple ways in which he's able to score, there's a lot of levels to it. And then the big man in the middle, Rudy Gobert, and it's not just what he can do offensively around the rim, but defensively, um, it, it's going to be a new test and a new challenge and I think for the Nets this is the interesting part as they look at themselves and look at ways in which they need to improve also the different attacks and the different strategies that these opponents have against them and how they are able to be versatile and responsive in what they handle.